you know. Do is this not is this not here because it fell, or do you take it apart well, to get it, to the pots? I, I took it. Uh, well, it hadn't fallen, but it was um, very badly cracked and sagging. Mm. So I took it down to rebuild. Okay, but it should be circular. But if that hadn't happened, do you just reach over to grab the pots then? Oh, put, you, put them in? Um, that, that's that's the firebox, and it's arched over. Yeah. So you can't get to it from there. Okay, you can get sure. Get to it from the side here. And just reach in. But you do just go from in from the top, then. That's what yeah, I was trying to that's understand. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just not from where you are standing. Right, right. Because this whole area. Yeah. Is covered. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's amazing to think that this is just a small kiln. Yeah. Because it seems pretty pretty big already. Well, I think, you know, how many of those are going to fit in here? It just wouldn't be efficient to have a new one as big as you could manage, I would think. So now huh. you wonder, do you both want to make a small one or you want to combine forces and make a big one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it depends on your output. Uh, certainly, if, if you can make one that's, that's uh, twice as big in diameter, and twice as tall, that's eight times the amount of pots. And it doesn't take eight times the amount of wood to fire it. Mm. Ah, mm. see that? It's economics. Efficiencies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now that already makes uh, a lot of sense in medieval times to yeah. find mostly bigger ones. Yeah, because you, you, you can't make, there's a limit to how big you can make it to be worthwhile. Because if, if it takes you a whole year to make enough pots to fill the kiln, um, you know, what are you going to live on while you're, yeah. you know, um, probably, you know, fire the kilns a, a couple few times a year, depending on, <coughs> on your activity. If you've got a whole workshop with, you know, several potters, and uh, you might be able to keep a, you know, to be firing a kiln every couple of weeks. So they're pretty durable then, once built. Yeah, um, they when you when you get in in the English climate where frost is generally all you have to worry about. Um, yeah, that's no, right. No, it could last a long time. Um, in in this climate, if this gets wet and freezes, you know, it freezes solid and it cracks all up and you know. <laughs> you can see what happens to it. Yeah, it starts to just disintegrate, crumble. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we have much harsher <coughs> low temperatures here than in Western Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah some, some of the parts, the, the lower parts that are fired harder, um, like this. Uh, this, this was, uh, um, one a, a fire bar from a previous incarnation of this kiln. See, this, this was where it rested against the the side of the of the firebox, and then arch like that, mm. and top over. Anyway, this so this got fired pretty hard, and you know you can see it's pretty strong. And even though this has been buried in the ground, gotten wet, frozen solid, it hasn't cracked apart. Mm -hmm. the, the cracking happens, you know, during the firing. Yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's amazing how how sturdy the the multiple fire clays are are getting. Yep. Oh, here's here's a serious one. <laughs> Look at that. That's like vitrified, half an inch deep. And over here, you can see an, an artifact of how we make the the fire bars. You take a I oh, see, so taking a, a log? A stick, a yeah. stick or mm. flexible stick or, or two. Um, arch them and dig them into the sides and then wrap clay around them. Mm. Okay. And, and uh, that holds it up, that holds the arch up until the clay stiffens enough to hold itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the same technique that we were using for the bread yeah, yeah. And, and that And that is um, absolutely how they did it because pieces have been found with the hollow in the middle. <laughs> Even sometimes with, with like um, yeah, the, the, uh, the impression of the bark on the thing. 
Makes sense. Uh, there. Sure looks like clay. Yep. Squishable. Makes fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of stones in it. So it's not the the smooth sausage that you would would want to get. But I first started trying to get the stones out of it, and I discovered that really. Um, the stones, if you get the ones that are like, well, depending on what what thing you're doing, if you're building um, walls, you know, structural cob, um, you just want to keep the stones that are bigger than a golf ball, say, um, make it annoying to, to deal with. But anything smaller than that is not a problem. For this, um, you know, you don't want any stones that are bigger than a marble. But yeah, so it's not necessary to sieve everything and, right. and really process it the way that is uh, necessary to make build, like uh, throwing clay. Right. But that that really um, oh, oh, there like it is. Cut, cuts down on time. Yeah. There is your clay. You now it it uh, it's not it's not pure clay by any means. It's, there's quite a bit of silt in it along with the sand and gravel but it's got enough clay that it makes really good cob yeah and the clay that I have at home is more pure clay but it means that I have to add a lot of sand mm -hmm. to make good cob <laughs> yeah and that I have to buy <laughs> so mm -hmm. this is kind of nice it comes as an all-in-one yep Please. Taking the rocks out right now is a good thing. It's better to get the, the clay mixed up and uh, this is a good cool tool. And you don't want too much at once, or, like, or you got a lump that won't work in. Okay. And then you just sort of like like uh, um, like forging a sword, <laughs> fold it and fold and weld and fold and weld. Okay. That. Okay. And once you've got some of that, and you just need we'll need you know many dozens of these. Okay. <laughs> this whole thing will needs to be worked. And then those are going to be that. pressed into the, the stones to make the wall. Yeah, starting okay. starting with the underneath in the firebox. Okay. Okay, so we'll be we'll be making. Uh, our people will be making the the patties, and then yep. someone will be down in there yeah. to. Uh, yeah, and the you know, firebox obviously is a one-person job. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, before before we do any anything any wet clay in there, we need to tear off the uh, the, the weak part of the top. Yeah. Of the yeah. We can have the kids uh, help with that.
but this was too easy. I can get you another one. I don't have a lot of freezers. Yeah, we have three test freezers. No. No. I got this crazy thought in my head that I better have that. It's too big. I need some. It's got to be a bit drier than that. Not everything. So work the water out of it. Oh, the oh the the back. Well, the back of the firebox. Uh, no specific way. I'm just just uh, making it relatively smooth. I mean, you will be shoving logs in there, so you don't yeah. want you don't want rough edges that will catch on logs and and break break off. Oh, that makes sense. Pieces. Yep. So then it's elongated. It's uh, sort of oval. Yeah, I will need your side. Yeah, I mean, I could perfectly well make it a, a square end. Uh, if I was starting from scratch, maybe I'd do that. But it's already here, uh, and I'm just finishing off you know, with what's there. Yeah. Yeah. And are you building the front out a little bit beyond the last rafter? So. It becomes more uh, support supportive for the next for the outside of the kiln. Um, yeah, well, yeah, there'll be an arch. Yes, exactly. Here, about about this much airspace. Oh, so you're leaving then, airspace, and they put another arch. Yeah, in. Another, another arch, and that will hold the front edge of the kiln. Yeah. And actually, for for doing that next arch, um, good time to start right now. Um, I'm going to put in some yeah. some. Uh, bent sticks to hold it because it's not going to be strong enough to hold itself up. Yeah, and that is a similar technique you're using for the the rigid... The, for the fire bars. For the fire yeah. bars themselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. These, these uh, understory bushes tend to be really good for this because they, they're naturally flexible. Yeah. So that's about five feet. Okay. There might be another one up in here. Unless you want to go to a... On the bottom. Nice and in there's, that's a totally nice cylinder. No, you have to flatten it. And squish it inward. Perfect pancake. <laughs> Monster. I can fly it inwards, by the way. Watch out. <laughs> no, it's a pancake directly by your knees. I have to do that. Oh no. No. Did it fall off? Yes. Oh. I already made that one. That's making it easy. Yeah. Have you not put pancake hat stock? Yes, yes. My wrists are coming in. Or you can wrap one around depending on circumstances. Oh. <laughs> Pretty soon we can play patty bake, patty bake. Yeah. Well, not patty bake, it's I'm patty cake. For, when these cook, it's going to be patty I'm bake. I'm looking for this much space between the, uh, this fire bar and it. the next one. Yeah, and that is about two, three inches. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Hey. It's a, it's a, no. No. Well, you got to balance the, the size of pots you're going to make. Um, you, you want, you want the fire bars to be spaced close enough that, that pots can either spin between or, or balance completely on one. Um, if the, if there's too much space, then you're going to have big gaps between your pots and that's bad. You want, you want the whole, the whole kiln to be pretty much evenly filled with pots. That that makes the airflow e more even and helps hold the heat in. Yeah, and the more even the airflow, the less likely you get uh, the buckling and the cracking. Somewhat, and in particular, the more even the firing. You know, if, you, if you're if the kiln is full from top to bottom with pots, um, you're you're going to likely have. Uh, the you know, even heat throughout the kiln and that is one of the reasons why you want to fire a full kiln yeah <clears throat> and that is even right now the case not, not just to use your wood most efficiently the firing works better sort of fact that you have these branches inside the arch that's not a problem downstream? Uh, they, they'll burn out with the first firing, mm -hmm. just leaving a hole in the middle of, of the fire bar. Yeah, and the hole is not an issue. Yeah. With the patties, are you covering the floor too or just the sides? Um, I'm, I'm just the cob down in the yeah. end there. Yeah. I was just filling in. There was a big hole where I pulled a big rock out of the floor. So it's not important that the floor where the wood goes, burning goes, is covered with cob, right? Right. Okay. Um, it's if, if it's if it's generally clayish soil, which this is. Well, this was dug up by a bulldozer out of the pond. So this yeah. is who knows. There there may be some topsoil in here and and some clay it's it's a hodgepodge yeah and um, if it was like the undisturbed native soil it would be clay from like you know here down about a feet down yeah and some of this is clayish and some of it is just does not have any clay character Now that I've got this uh, this arch started, somebody else wants to do some some arch wrapping. You got experience on on how it works? Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't want a, a nice smooth sausage. You want it rough. Um, and since it won't stick to the old clay, um, you want to make it nice and nice and thick. Yeah, let it let it squish out ways. Yeah, you're really pressing into it with your thumbs. Yeah. I mean, look at that. And that also helps the set and the other layer getting on it. That's right. So it serves two purposes. Yeah. Hey Simon, look at how he puts his thumb in. So he's squeezing it down, not out as much. I'm doing that, but it sticks onto me. Yeah. Yeah, these gloves are probably not the the best. Well, uh, I'm gonna thing. make. I'm gonna mass produce <laughs> patty cakes. Yeah. Did you take the stuff out of the container again? Why? Wait, wait! Don't take it back. Just go chuck it in the woods. Eat it. Well then, eat it. Don't take it home. So you need quite a bit of clay. 
Okay. Yes, yeah. you do. To make something like this. Mm -hmm. Try Even building more the, if you're beginning. The house down below. Yeah. Have, you guys have not been on the land in quite some time. Right? No. We've got a cob hut that we're building next to the dragon oven. You seen the dragon oven? Yes. The dragon yes. Oven? Yeah. So it started the building. I don't think we've seen the finish. Yeah. I know. I'm not one to be emotioned up. You can be emotioned up, but that's smelling. Oh, smelling. Yeah. So how are the grandkids? Regarding the mammoth I think they even have mining operations for it, especially when they go up the rivers and have high-powered hoses that they spray into the embankments. Oh, I bet they do. Away to where, try to find the stuff and mining where, it. Where is this? In Russia. Really? Siberia, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, I thought I, I... I think I saw a video about that, where they were just going and they were... They were you would walk maybe five standards and you would find fossils. Bones, tusks, skulls. Well, I know that, uh, that a number of the... Uh, uh, of the natives were working it like trappers. They were in the way back and gathering it up. That was even, I, I know it was regulated enough where they were kind of hiding out to do it. Now those guys didn't, definitely didn't have any kind of hoses or any power, yeah. but apparently enough of it's, it, it, they don't really need to be doing that right now because it's melting out. Right, and maybe they they found easier ways. Since well, they, they just, at this point, it's go get it before it falls into the ocean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, I, what I had seen is that the, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what the Siberian natives were called. But anyway, those are the ones that were actually out doing the mining of it from the ice flows, okay. where it was just melting out of the ice. Yeah. And that got me excited because that's oh. not endangering anything. <laughs> it was too squishy. I just squishy. wondered where that. Yeah, when the video I saw about it, the, the ground was frozen and there was nothing growing there at anyway. So they were doing it out with just regular hoses. Uh, ragged ones are better. Well, it's true that Simon mentioned that to me, but I was trying to be artful. <laughs> So construction-wise, what is a a good tip or thing to to know or realize before making one ourselves? It's like it's round. Um, should the the entrance be about the same length as the? Because it almost looks like it's about double. I found, I found that. A uh, firebox, no matter the size wow. of the they kiln, if it's half the size, it still needs a firebox that's about 16 by 14 to 16 by 4 foot or so long. And the 4 foot is from the back of the fire? From the back to the front. Oh, so no matter how big the diameter of the kiln, um, the firebox should be about 4 feet. Yeah, up to this size. Yeah, okay. Large, if you go gro if you go larger, then uh, larger than yeah. this, I don't know. So yeah, round, uh, yeah, because this is about a two feet diameter. Thirty inch, two and a half. Th feet. Thirty, two and a half feet, thirty inches. The stick is twenty nine and a half inches long. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty smart too. Using a stick as a. Uh, no, no. It's like he's done that before. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's a good and the width and height. You were saying it should be about this. It's they don't have to be, but 
it makes the most sense for them to be about the same. So it's a, a square opening and about 18 inches? Um, yeah, the, no, the height? Really yeah, the height, height of the, the no, the, the inner, the, the fire. Uh, the, the, the fire box um, is about 16 inches high, 16 inches wide. Yeah, 16. Aw, oh, kitty on a chair. Yeah, and the kiln itself is uh, is just a circular tube. And you were doing that about how, how high? 30 inches high above the fire bars. Yeah. Now remember that we come located. Yeah, so that is also almost square as well. 32 yeah. diameter, th or 30, 30 diameter, diameter, 30 high. Yeah. The original English medieval kilns were that were five or six feet in diameter. Um, generally, had they didn't have a tunnel; they just had an arch opening, maybe a foot and a half thick wall, and that's all. Um, it may have been that that uh, because the firebox was so large, they didn't need the extra tunnel. Added. Yeah, because the diameter of the kiln was already okay. yeah. so much. Yeah, that makes sense. She really shows you why she wants to be rich. And it was an experiment too. And when you first made it, did you put the, the wood reinforcement all the way around? Not all the way around. Uh, I think you build it like I, I built, halfway. I, I would I would build it up six eight so inches, backfill with all some all dirt to, to study it. Yeah, and build up more. Yeah, so that whole building it into the landscape is really useful. Yeah, because it's a bit of a uh, thermal capacitor as well, right? To some degree. Yeah, I know that. Uh, when there's a, a eight or ten inches of wall thickness on one of these, these kilns, okay. after it's been firing for eight or ten hours, the outside is like hot to the touch. And that's it. Yeah. So you're not losing as much of your internal heat, mm -hmm. which th again is is good when, as you told, as you said that. The, the the more fluctuations you have in the in the temperature, the more Challenge. fluctuations you have in the the more chance of thermal shock. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's all starting to make sense. I assume that's because we, we just got balls Why so many bumps and dents on the outside and, and the top? So, to make it hold into the, the next the piece. The top, all yeah, on the top. Um, one to be rough so the next piece joins mm -hmm. thoroughly. Now, on the outside, it's just that it doesn't matter what it looks like. The they, they make all the the and the clay just likes to be massaged. And the inside <laughs> smooth because... God, i got to get up. <laughs> stuck here. It's just, uh, uh, yeah, don't touch me with that hand. Yeah. But I Thank hope you will. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> Here, Glenn, I got a nice so wet patty for you. Okay. Yes, and it's fun. So that's, we're going to have a drive-in movie. I think that'll be awesome. Um, almost as much space as there is bar. Yeah, one on one, more or less. Close. And, okay. and, and based by the size of what you intend to throw yeah. most of the time. Thanks for driving out with me today. Mm-hmm. Fun. Yeah, that would, I'm so that would be part of it. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I was hoping we'd get out yesterday, and that just didn't. Yeah, I think the the, the, uh, the firebox, you know, 16 by uh, 16. Then, uh, um, from a million years ago, called up as soon as I was able to. Um, take that that same area, just, and you, I would think you would want about that much area combined of yeah, all of these slots project in here. No. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, so, so this is the air that's coming in here. Yeah, it's about the same. Get, doesn't get cut off. Backed off. Yeah. yeah. So the same cross section in flow. Yeah. So you don't get a constriction. Mm -hmm. More or less. Yeah. So.
Well, he probably would have had me taken care of. Yeah. And one, once you have the whole rim uh, up and, and the whole thing backfilled and, the, and the, the, the stones back up, how do you roof it? Uh, well, I'm between, I've got the uh, start of the frame there. And no, I mean, the, do you fire it completely open with an open no. oh, you, top? Um, they, the medieval kilns were fired, the, the pots were stacked up, yeah. and then, well, then uh, little, well, you see the, the little, the little uh, plates and, and, and uh -huh. you know, pancakes. Oh, sorry. Yes, lay lots of these all over the top. Uh, to, to close off the, any gaps. Well, you, you want you want gaps, but you want you want the air to to have to go zigzag back and forth so heat doesn't radiate out the top, and so that it so that it doesn't escape too fast. Okay. Yeah, because that's uh, one of the things I was uh, mentioning in the car that. What I what I didn't do in the pit fire was uh, using anything to cover the pots with, and the two things I found were shirts or broken pots, and uh, a very inventive uh, Native Americans were using old license plates. Yeah, that work. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice smaller pieces, so there is openings and it's yeah. almost like scales. Yeah. But yeah, that is. So you just made those. Yeah, that, that's not broken pots. Uh, these these are are just pieces of clay. Yeah. Uh, at uh, close to the end of the firing, well, um, from from halfway through the firing, uh, the beginning of the firing, you want it really open so that the airflow rushes through, and you get lots of you know all the water driven off of the pots. It all goes um, out. You know, good, really good ventilation, and. Then when you want to start it, when the water's all driven off and you want to start getting it hotter, then you progressively make little clay pancakes, thin thing, and just toss them on the top. Huh! Where there's, where there's a, a, a gap that you see flames coming up through, or you can see down into the pots, just toss a little pancake on that. And it's uh, wet clay, so it doesn't break anything, because it's wet, yeah. and then they get fired. Yep, and you know, some, some of them, late in the firing, some of them will crack apart from the intense heat on the wet clay. But uh, this sort of sandy, silty clay, um, especially the clay at Penzik, is quite sandy and has a lot of mica in it. And it, it just it dries out really quickly and just uh, huh. I, ne I never realized that 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 was an option and is that something that was found in medieval uh, exactly, but, but broken pots yeah um, broken pieces of um, sometimes pieces of turf would be put on top of the load yeah but not all the way at the beginning so first it's, it's completely yeah at the end so that's similar to pit firing, where you have an open fire yeah. until you need to bank it down, right. Up here. and then it sits. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I like the I like the little pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, for insulation, make little pancakes and, and make them into pierogies. <laughs> this is hollow. Oh! Oh yeah. <laughs> It's insulation. Yeah, so if you've got large openings. Yeah. Yeah, we do need to see a firing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it takes uh, probably 12 hours. I have some range. I mean, the neighbors that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's fun.